audience. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line, coast to coast. If it is Love Line, I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. And uh, we're happy to welcome back to the show tonight Rabbi Shmuley Boltach. Oh, wait a minute. I got to get some coffee in me so I can. Give me like a. Gargle. Gargle and coffee so you can pronounce my name. Give me some chocolate. <laughs> I last, ate some last time, chocolate. Last time I, I saw do it. Rabbi, I think he was having his right. n- ninth child. <laughs> or eighth? Uh, we just had our seventh. Seventh. But it may be nine. You, know, you never know when it comes to children. They multiply before you can even count. <laughs> no, How many really have you got, Adam? I have zero children. Oh. My model airplanes and my sporting goods are my children. <laughs> your, your tools. Hey, you and my tools are my children. <laughs> Rabbi... But I do have seven kids. Uh, Rabbi uh, Shmuley is a uh, guy who's been on this show a couple of times. He's the uh, author of the book of uh, Why Can't I Fall in Love? And uh, also... And I hadn't seen much of Rabbi Shmuley before he came on the show uh, a year and change ago. But uh, as soon as he got off this show, he became a rabbi to the stars. Mm. I saw him on the uh, Michael Jackson, hanging around with Michael Jackson. Uh, What other celebrities have you befriended? Well, I believe in going straight to the top and then working your way down. I started with you, Adam. (laughs) And Dr. Drew. And uh, after that, I figured once you meet world-renowned superstars everyone you meet after that is not you, you won't be intimidated he was not so i can be myself by michael you really you know by the way i felt so sorry for that guy with the way that people throw themselves at him it is yeah. unbelievable drew you were at the uh, benefit right with, uh, rabbi shmuley right. was there in new york with michael jackson right about six months ago well or? it was it was in february we, we we launched we did an american and european launch of heal the kids which is a an organization that seeks to reprioritize kids in the lives of their parents and we chose valentine's day because this this whole thing about lovers and we wanted to try to show that romantic love should be inclusive that that you can be parents and lovers so uh we really wanted to get to carnegie hall you know, this, this was michael's first speech really in in the united states we wanted to have the biggest experts and without brown nosing too much because i'm only four inches away from him we wanted dr drew to be there he was our first choice and he very kindly flew That's out with his kind. wife and he, as usual, gave great wisdom and was much admired by the people. But Michael's fans, they were mostly European fans that night. Is that they Brazil, came, like, Brazilians about, and things too, right? Yeah. From South America. And- well, there were about 2,000 fans that came from abroad. But, uh, hey, Adam, these people were having seizures. They were throwing themselves at the stage. I mean, I've never seen anything like well, that. Well, actually, Drew, they were throwing themselves at me. Like, well, at, well, at the Michael stage. Was at the stage. Them, so it looked yeah. like it was I understand, Michael, but it was the stage. Yeah. yeah. Like, the moot and, point. And, and how, have you spent much time with Michael Jackson alone? Yeah, I mean Anyways. we're 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 friends. We we run this uh, organization together. We did an American launch. We did a we did a uh, a launch at Oxford University, and uh, we're actually doing a book together now about how adults can recapture their childlike qualities. So they can be like you, Adam, yeah. curious and funny and <laughs> not cynical. No, no, imaginative. No, no, successful. Right, yeah, cash in on other people's. Um, uh, dashed dreams. That's what you're going to do with this book. But I'm not. I'm not cynical. So M- Michael Jackson, good guy, normal guy, bizarre guy. Uh, well, I give him what for me is a very high compliment, perhaps the ultimate compliment, and that is that uh, amidst achieving, uh, you know, his achievements rise to the heavens. He's very down to earth. He's very humble, and I like that. I like people but, who don't take themselves seriously. He's very gracious to people he meets, and he's very shy. Yeah, and. Uh, Arrogance turns me off. You see, I'm, of all the virtues that I have, my humility stands out the most. Right. Which is supposed to be humorous. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I really, I like humble people. So, uh, he's a humble guy. And that's what I think. Did you feel, find that that night, Drew? Well, I, I humble to the point of, like, uh, almost shamed. Meek? Yeah. Almost? Like, like uncomfortably humble. Like, 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 uncomfortable in his own skin kind of thing. But throughout I felt his very, life, very sorry for him. loved by the children. <laughs> no, but I felt like a guy that, that really needs connection with people and can't. He's he got these people throwing himself yeah, at him. Yeah, it's he's hard. He can't walk down the street. I yeah. mean, we saw that that night. Yeah. And, um, but I mean, like, for example, even that night as we were leaving Carnegie Hall, um, all the fans were you know, yelling, screaming, and uh, and they were, like, closing in on us as we yeah, were getting yeah. into the van yeah. with Michael. And my, my, my children were with me, my three oldest daughters, 
age 12, 10, and 9. And I remember Michael really risking himself because he, he can often get hurt by his own fans to make sure that these little girls were not, he was very scared for them, that they weren't mm. stampeded. Mm. And his like security were pushing him into the van and he wouldn't go until, until the little girls got in so that they weren't hurt. And little things like oh. that impressed me. By the way, you said something amazing that night that I've quoted to so many people and it was very courageous. We were speaking about the Britney Spears phenomenon and uh, yeah, yeah, she says she's a virgin but she's also very sexually mm. explicit. Mm. Uh, I'm not judging or being critical she's a friend of michael's actually but i just bring up that point and i quoted you from time magazine oh. uh yeah so you said you weren't sure about the quote because <laughs> the, you, that that uh that is that where you called her a whore no no okay. no, no, no not that one oh, i didn't see that one no the one where, where one? he said that that the whole early puberty phenomenon might be induced by the sexually explicit material that adolescents are sort of consuming and i asked you what you thought about the phenomenon and you said it scares me to death yeah Absolutely, but but I but <laughs> there's a whole story attached to that though. It, it does scare me that it could be a possibility. It needs to be studied. Well, they, and and they, that's what I said to Time Magazine. And then they quoted me as taking that position and saying that's the way it is. I thought, oh jeez. So w- what you're saying is that is that early puberty is being like puberty is being well, jump started he, by reality. sexuality he, in the culture. Th- I, that, I think that's worth studying. And the, the problem it's a very complex issue. It turns out early puberty is not occurring. Is it's, that right? It's not occurring. Menarche has not changed in 200 years. It was purely a nutritional issue. It's set. Pre-puberty is decreasing. Bre- uh, breast bud, pubic hair, which is an adrenal gland-mediated phenomenon, not ovarian, which is very interesting. But, so, but, could, what, but then again, that still could also be evoked by something in the environment. But what, society, what society thinks of as puberty does not, is not changed. Has not changed. But you just talked about breast development and pubic hair. That's sort of how society judges puberty, maybe, not, maybe. not ovarian production and well, that kind of stuff. The reason I take issue is the Time Magazine article went on to discuss estrogens, which is the ovarian issue, which is not what this is about. This is about the adrenal glands. But there was that woman who was quoted as saying that when a, a dog sees, sorry, when a, when, a, when a person sees food, they salivate. So yeah. there is... Oh, of course. We are, we are profoundly affected. So when you see something very sexual, Adam... Yeah, I get an erection. <laughs> you get an erection, you... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I no. thought to you by now this is all no big deal. No big deal. What? The whole sexual thing. No, been there, done that. No, haven't no. gotten used to it. Okay, that's the beauty of sexuality. It's like always it, uncomfortable. It's like everything <laughs> that's bad for you: booze, cigarettes. It's, you never get your fill. <laughs> you know how many times I vomited from drinking and and, and announced uh, the next morning never again, only to vomit the next weekend. <laughs> that's the beauty of me, Melissa. Uh huh. You're 14. Yeah. What's up? Um, not much. Uh, okay. Well, um, my parents divorced when I was like two, one, real young. I don't remember. Um, and they had a real big custody battle. Like, I think it was like four years or something. Anyways. Who are you, um, who are you living with during that four years? Um, my dad. And I don't, mom I don't must remember. have been mom must have been a mess then. Yeah, mom was into drugs and because I don't know she was having trouble getting her life together and because of issues when she was younger. And anyways, uh, the courts you know said I'm to live with my dad and my dad has raised me and he's been a very good father um, till like two years ago recently. Um, he owned his own business, and if you know anything about owning your own business and it not working out, you have lots of stress, and it totally took a toll on him, and he totally changed, and he had, like, a heart attack, and, um, like, he's gotten, he's taken, like, his stress out on me, and he's like, I'll, you know, do stupid little teenage things, you know, like, small little you know, mistakes, and then, like, he'll hit me sometimes and curse at me, and, you know, and, like, my friends have even witnessed, like, he'll pull the car over the side and, like, slap me, and anyways, um, I'm smart, I think, I guess, so my family, like, on my dad's side, they have, like, real high expectations for me, and I'm going to be going to New Mexico Military Institute for freshman year, and... Um, high school. What's but, the, what is the question for us, Melissa? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay, well, during this time of my dad's stress and everything, I because of like everything going on in my life, I've gotten into a big depression. Okay. And I cut myself sometimes, okay. and I've gotten into like doing drugs, like marijuana and speed, and totally like not doing what a 14 year old should be doing. Yeah. And. Mm. 
Anyways, I talked to my mom. Um, I've been talking to her um, a lot because she, you know, fought for four years to try and get custody of me. Anyways, um, we talk, and she has, like, gotten her life straightened out. She's gotten the therapy. She's gotten the help. She is my brother and my sister. All right, and hold on. Hold on uh-huh. a uh-huh. second. Uh-huh. Melissa, uh, mm-hmm. I'll tell you, it's weird because we usually will never go on this long with somebody spinning a boring yarn. I'm sorry. That's all right. But you, you, she's so intelligent. That, it, you're yeah, intelligent, yeah. and you don't leave gaps for yeah. me to jump in and criticize, which I normally do. <laughs> Plus, I'm tired and a little bit distracted. Mm-hmm. But w- we we must cut to the chase here. Do you, right. do you want to go live with your mom? Is that yes, it? I, I okay, do. Here's I have one question: How many years sober is she? Um, I'm not too sure. I think it's been like five or six. Is she working an active program of recovery? Is she? Will she have a sponsor? Is she going to meetings? Oh, she's already over that. Uh, uh, nope. Then don't I go don't, back. Don't, uh, bop, 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 nope. If she does, if she, if she thinks she's over it, do not go back. If she is is an active program of recovery, she's, if she's working with a sponsor regularly, go back. But if okay, she well, believes she's over it, it's yeah, uh, I'm just for gonna you. say like okay, because I was talking to her and I talked to her about the drugs. I talked to her about the cutting myself. I talked to her about everything, mm-hmm. and she's gotten her life back on track and taking care of her kids. And she has a husband now. She she's talked to me and she wants me to get therapy and she wants me to come out there and live with her so I can get help. And because right. well, my well, dad wait. doesn't care about my no, 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 where's no, there know. where's there. She lives in California. Okay. okay, but what about the military academy? I kind I don't know. It's a good opportunity, but I don't know if I should go because I'm She's having these problems. Better if you don't go. Better if you don't go. Get right. some treatment. Go, go see mom. Go, go see mom. But listen, mom's got to guarantee you she's going to do her work because mom's got a, a ragged history and uh, relapses around the corner dealing with a, a very difficult 14-year-old. Yeah, you know what's amazing is Melissa, 14, who's uh, been to hell and back already, sounded like you're talking to a woman in her 30s. Exactly. You know, I was just about to comment on that. There are no children in America anymore. Whenever people say to me, oh, do you hear about this shooting, that shooting, how could kids do this? I said, these aren't kids. These are adults in children's bodies. Mm-hmm. That's what's so interesting about the pre-puberty phenomenon. Mm-hmm. There are no kids in America. If being a child means that you look forward to the future, people are profoundly depressed about the future. If being a child means that you're still curious about life, most of these people are already sort of fed up. They think, they, you know, it's been there, done that. There's a cynicism that has already become endemic. Um, well, you guys have kids. I mean, uh, Drew's kids are waiting by the fireplace for Santa to come down in July. Well, by my the way, but watching Britney Spears and it scares me. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, she's you know, fine. it's like it's like your kids in a van with Michael Jackson. <laughs> though. Uh, that that's something to think about. But I, don't you think that kids from a good family are, are going to endure this? Kids these days want to grow up. They really feel that being a child is profoundly uncool. It's just amazing. You know, global warming means that you sort of lose two seasons. You just have extremes, winter and summers, no springs, no autumn. That's what life is like. You go from infanthood straight to adulthood. You're right. She's 14, and she sounds like she's going on 50. Right. There's another version. I'm just thinking my boys have this version. Other than Britney Spears, it's professional sports. In their mind, Little League, just one just tiny step from Dodger Stadium. Yeah. I mean, th- they're, that's where their head's at. Yeah. That's well, you know, uh, Eric that. Fromm, the, the great psycho- psychologist, said uh, that children, this is uh, 40 years ago, that children are afraid to say they don't know anything anymore. You know, they yeah. don't ask. They pretend to know. That was the beginning of it. And today they're, they're, they're afraid to show that they have not yet grown up. Right. They really think that they're being left behind. And uh, it's troubling because, uh, really, the perfect adult, I think, is when you have a child at your center instead of being a child with an adult at your center. Josh? Yes. You're 31. Yes. What's up? I think my uh, fiance likes her uh, vibrator a little too much. Uh huh. So she's a, a child with a vibrator at her center. What you're saying? No, I just think she. I she just bought another one today. Well, didn't buy. Someone gave her another one today. I see. So what's the problem? Why is that bad? Well, I don't know. It, I'm. I'm. I think I'm having like in, insecurity. Yeah. No kidding. This is. Uh, this is my penis is too small. And another. Another. Cloaked in another question. Well, right? but, uh, we do hear that women get attached to these things. Yeah, but he hasn't told us anything about her. He's just well, him. He's afraid. Is she attached to it? Well, sometimes I think that she'd rather use that than like. What does she tell you when you think that? 
she says that it's like two different things. That the pleasure I give her is totally different than the pleasure she gets from. Yeah, that's because you're pounding on her, going, "Was, was that good enough? Was good enough? Was that as good as the vibrator?" I mean, come on, relax. Well, I'm, I'm not really after her about it. You know, she she pretty much lets me know when she uses it. I mean, I usually I'm never here. How often is that? that, uh, that how often is she using it? About uh, three or four times a week. Well, let me let me just jump in here for a second and say that um, I'll take the Stone Age prude line here, and I think there is something to what you're saying. Studies show that w women women say that 87 percent of the time they have better orgasms masturbating than they do with their husbands, and very few men ever take the time to really understand the female body and really communicate sufficiently to cr to have uh, a, a, a pleasurable, intimate connection with their wives. Now, you do have a problem it, insofar as she finds uh, pleasuring herself better than being with you, there may be something deficient in your relationship, and I think that is worth exploring. Uh, Drew may disagree with me, but no, I, no, I, I, think, I think that's reasonable. I think there is I, something I, I, to talk. A lot of men don't know what foreplay is. They think it's something made by Black and Decker. You know, they... they <laughs> and um, if, well, you're, if you're interested in a strong, intimate connection, I think that you have to get naked with her, and nakedness today means something physical. I mean, get emotionally naked. Be prepared to ask the, the questions that might make you feel very uncomfortable. Well, you, you say you're never there, Josh. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I mean, when she does it, I'm not here. Right. I didn't mean that I'm never here. You're, you're gone four days a week, though. Huh? You're gone four days a week. No, I, she comes home from work about an hour before I see. I okay, and you guys live together. Yeah. And so she comes home before you get home from work. She pleasures herself, and then that's it for her that night, right? Pretty much. Uh, yeah. All right, well, yeah, yeah, now you're starting to get into a little substitution problem here. Well, why don't yeah. you? Well, all right. So, why don't you talk to her about that? Are you are you romantic during the day? Do you call her up from work for no other reason than to say you were thinking about her? We have lunch together. You every, do every day. Pussy. Yeah, see, because we oh, both work. That's horrible. <laughs> what? Where do you work? <laughs> you work at Daisy Farm. Where do you <laughs> no, work? Where we, where we, she works like ten minutes away from here, from where we live, and as do I. We don't work at the same place. And you guys have lunch every day. Yeah. Holy Christ. All right. Uh, eh. There are still that's, some romantics left, oh, Adam. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just wondering. I'm wondering here. what's it's up with her now. Yeah, it's all, it's all fitting together. What, so. Was she uh, abused sexually, or did she have uh, some energy in that department? No, I think there was some verbal abuse. Uh, does, she did, does she seem to be a problem, a troubled person? No, no, no. no she's no, no, mm. not really. Oh. Right. By the way, I mean, on the contrary, for a lot of people. <laughs> Sex orgasm is just a great sedative, and that's why you have to try to make sex more exciting than a sedative. A lot of people use things like, like vibrators just to relax, and if you make your relationship... See, maybe there's too much anxiety in your relationship. Maybe there's some sort of angst, and uh, that's why it's so important to discuss this. But uh, have you ever talked to her about this? Oh, wait a minute. Let me get him back. Josh? Yeah? Have, have you spoken to her about this? Uh, or are we the first people you've discussed <laughs> this with? Actually, did, yeah, you're like... The first All right, why, why don't you have a talk with her about it? Just your concerns and how it's making you feel disconnected from her. That's All it. right. And well, uh, Orthodox Jews, they're not allowed to use vibrators, are they? <laughs> no? Um, that would not... <laughs> how do I answer that? Um, Is there, there anything... Would be, there would be no problem using a vibrator. There they, would be they, no? They must be but, but, having, but having said that, having said that, it should be used with... A, a couple together and not on their own. I don't believe in masturbation. Much. I really don't. I believe that through we should, a hole, you should have great sex together. Do you use it through a hole in the sheet or are you allowed to just... No, only through full body armor, uh, not the hole in the sheet. I, I'll tell or you. Actually, I, uh, two separate bedrooms through a hole in the wall. My, uh, my Where did you get this hole my, in the sheet thing? You've been watching too many movies. My step-grandfather was an uh, old world Jew <laughs> and he was from Hungary. He was like a uh, you know, super, super old world Jew. And he sat down and explained to me once all the bizarre rituals that have to do with the Jewish faith. And I was fascinated by it. And I think we may have gotten into this a little bit before. But some of the rules about uh, putting metal to your face or shaving and that kind of stuff and the two sets of dishes and the uh, uh, the fowl and the, the poultry and the, the, the buttermilk and not paying retail <laughs> and all that stuff. But I, it, it's, I'll tell you, it is a, uh, it's, it's, it's a religion that's, um, 
it's almost like a novelty religion to me. I mean, it, it's good, but it's funny at the same time. It's, it's definitely one of the funnier well, religions. Well, we, we, we have a sense of humor about it. But I will tell you that while all the things you said are true, the, the, the sheet thing, I mean, that's the KKK. They wear sheets. You, you <laughs> Jews do not sheets. use sheets. In fact, in Jewish law, you can't have any clothes on when you make love. It's flesh pressed against flesh. No socks? Judaism is very erotic. What about a yarmulke? Uh, only if it has a hole in it. <laughs> And what about what about because if you don't if you don't if you don't have the holy yarmulke then your horns can't fit through so you have to make sure you know yeah you know and I don't understand I and and Drew uh, please you know I'm not just sucking up to the rabbi here (laughs) I have said that uh, I love the Jews and I love the gays yes many times Uh, many times so you must especially love gay Jews there aren't any well (laughs) actually they're around their parents have killed themselves (laughs) but they actually exist. no, I, I love the Jews because they take care of their families, they pay their taxes, they're not criminals. I mean, you go, go into any prison, you're not going to find many <laughs> Jews. All you got to know about this, here's all you need to know. Go to any major prison in any major city. Here's what you got. <clears throat> you got the Crips, you got the black gangs, the Bloods, all right? Then you got the Aryan Brotherhood, <laughs> those are the whites. Then you got the Mexican Mafia and the Latino guys, and then a sprinkling of Asian dudes have started their own sort of Asian Mafia. There's no such thing as any uh, Beth Hillel uh, <laughs> Mafia in prison. There's no Jew population in prison. That's all you need to know about the Jews. Watch any docu- any documentary, watch any movie. You'll never see the Jewish prison population. They don't exist. They're not guards. They're not wardens. It's like fat. Fair with the whole with the whole prison thing. They didn't want to get near it. Yeah, but you're also not going to cheer a Jew in the NBA. I <laughs> Jews would. don't don't grow to six eight. <laughs> All right, they they may not be in the NBA, but they're not in prison either. God bless them. These people take care of themselves. They take care of their their own. And I was talking. Who did we have in here? What black woman? I'm going to vote for you for president. By the was way, was I talking about? Oh yes. Then they're smart too. And what, they're smart. And they're crafty. What? But they're smart. The what, Jews. What? We had a uh, who would we have in here? Like Queen Latifah or. Uh, who, Kim I, Coles? Kim Coles or something. I finally said to her, what do you blacks, what is your problem with the Jews? Oh, yeah, Kim Cole. Yeah, these guys, the Jews are traditionally uh, progressive, uh, left-wing types, you know, Democrats. These people are, mar- we're marching next to you. These people have seen seen strife and uh, seen their people killed and executed. Now, you guys have a lot in common, and the Jews are generally, you know, pretty good to the blacks. Or at least, you know... That, that's what it seems to be. And I finally got it out of her. She's jealous. Oh, she said that? She said she said that the Jews complain and the blacks complain, and they don't like each other because they both complain. I see. You see what I'm yeah, saying? We don't be- complain. We whine. You Very whine different. and they complain. But the point is, is there was like some competition in the complaint department. They didn't like that. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? But you know, I, nature. I, I debated uh, Reverend Al Sharpton about six weeks ago in New York. Oh, wow. What was that like? Black, It was called Blacks and Jews, Brothers of Belligerence. And we sort of really went after each other on stage. And then we went out for dinner at a kosher restaurant. It was like that E.F. Hutton commercial. You know, he walked in and everything goes silent. And we've become good friends. I just went to see him in prison the other day because, you know, he's uh, he was arrested for... Uh, Demonstrating in Puerto Rico against uh, a naval bombing site. See? And, uh, Another black in prison. What, right? he, he, no, we've become good friends. He's I, an enigma. What's his deal? Well, what, he's doing a... Enigma. Oh, oh okay. Whew. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was close. Um, you know, I think that he... He's very courageous, and yeah. he has taken up a lot of issues. There are things I completely disagree with him on, obviously, because he has been... There's been a lot of strife between him and the Jewish community. I think he wants to make it right. I think he wants to try to have people understand that he didn't mean offense and if he did then he's sorry and wants to move on so we're trying to do some things together now actually we're trying to do a big literacy event in uh in harlem uh our heal kids initiative yeah. giving out books yeah things like that yeah I don't, I don't know what's in it for the blacks to piss off the jews it just doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, seem we, we like get, a great we get, plan we, we understand you feel that way I what mean, is that about it. It. How, how what percentage of this country is jewish uh less than two percent Less than two. Yeah. Jesus, you guys are loud. <laughs> and I always, I always think about that. I think who are the loudest? Who are the loudest for the smallest numbers? <laughs> I think the Jews uh, got the blacks trumped. In we that like department. attention. No kidding. Jesus, less than two percent. <laughs> you think there was forty-five, fifty percent? They're all in the urban centers. Though. <laughs> all they're right. All in the cities. All right. Let's. Uh, they're, not, they're not farming. I understand. Let's uh, take ourselves a break. Rabbi Shmuley both <laughs> I gotta get some coffee. You know, I only come back to hear that. You're the only person who says it right. <laughs>
There we go. Let me try. Rabbi Shmuley Botach is here tonight. He is the uh, author of uh, Why Can't I Fall in Love? We'll be back with him after this. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. one Yep, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Rabbi Shmuley Botach is here. He is the... Uh, I'm changing my name to Smith, by the way. <laughs> Rabbi Shmuley Smith is here. Spelled, He's the author... Spelled S-H-M-U-L-E-Y, Smith. <laughs> Why Can't I Fall in Love? He is the uh, rabbi of the stars. We're glad to have him back on the show. And, you know, we could really talk to the rabbi for hours and hours about uh, just about anything on this show. So we're going to have to force ourselves to power through a few calls tonight. Sean? Uh, hello? You're 19? Uh, yes, I am. What's up? Um, I have a problem. I've got a kind of a relationship going on with my stepsister. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Yeah. How, how old is she? 22. How long has she been your stepsister? Um, about seven months. Mm. Did you guys know each other before you became related? Uh, no. Mm. Uh, different areas. Our family's from different areas. Do you live in the same house? Uh, no, she's at school right now. Were nice. you living at the same house when this started happening? <clears throat> uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. We get this all the time. Really? Yeah. Well, we haven't had it in a little while, but actually. It's a common, common love line problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen. And why don't you give your usual spiel about teenagers in the house? Uh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, rabbis, you know, a lot of broken families, a lot of people remarrying later on in life. And you have a, you know, 14 year old guy and a 15 year old chick, or vice versa. And it's like you put them in the house and, uh, hey, this is your brother and this is your sister. The week before, there was people trying to date one another. Right. Maybe, right. Yeah, yeah the, the week before, he was looking at her across the uh, classroom, getting an erection. <laughs> now she's uh, down the hall and he hears the shower running and uh, mm. he's just had a night of uh, sleeping on his penis. And, and, <laughs> and these kids that come from these systems have poor boundaries and poor impulses control and have been maybe even in abusive systems at one point or another. Yeah. Uh, there's no abuse going uh, No, no, I know. I'm not like saying, Sean, Sean, relax. I'm, no, I'm just saying I, I'm surprised this does not happen all the time. Right. I mean, how how are you going to prevent this when you take a couple of people whose uh, hormones are popping and put them under the same roof? But based on what you're saying, it would follow that with, as time progressed and they found felt a greater kinship and grew more accustomed to each other, the attraction would diminish. Right. They would this, be the sister. But this guy was banging her on day one, so <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> And I mean, how long did it take for you guys to well, get together? Well, you used this euphemism. You said um, a bit of a relationship. How much was a bit? Well, it, we, we've been together probably about, I don't know, eight or nine times. She, um, she wants me to come up to school this weekend and spend the weekend with her, and I'm, like, really nervous about this. Yeah, I think, well, think how awful these boundary issues are. Well, this, is, this is family member now you, you're getting involved with. You really are getting intimate with this one. Do woman. you love her? Um, yeah, I, I, I think I do. And yeah. what I don't know yet. I mean, right. And what happens if this doesn't work out? Imagine how awkward, how awful. Think, I mean, Adam. What do you want to do? What, uh, the first thing you want to do when you ended a relationship with someone that really was over? Kill her and her family, <laughs> or, or just <laughs> oh, oh, not see them yeah, anymore. Just well, look, I have a stepsister who, uh, regrettably, I don't get to have sex with. <laughs> But if I did, I see her once every year and a half or something. It's no big deal. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, it's going to make for a uncomfortable Thanksgiving. But look at it this way. She's off at college. He's off doing something else. You guys come together a few times a year for a holiday. Yeah, but, but the point is, you, you've gotten together with your exes. Yeah, and but, stuff yeah, but like that's a shame that. because here he could be close to a potential sister, and he's going to avoid her because of uh, oh, all but, this awkwardness. Yeah, but, you but, never see your step family. Well, it's going to get really awkward in a few months here. Why? Um, she's late. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Good times. So you yeah. guys can give birth to your stepson, or how does that work? <laughs> would you have your? Would you yeah. have his they, blood stepson? Or they would have their their step cousin. <laughs> they'd have their nephew. <laughs> they'd have their nephews, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you give birth. You give birth to your step. Is it, do, do you think this one's yours? Well, I mean, I, I can't see much other time that she's, she's and the grandchild, and oh, she says Christ no. Sake. We spend all the time uh, okay. together. So. All right. So does she want to have the baby? We don't know what to do. All right. Well, well, I don't know. Should he go up there and, and figure it out? I mean, how do you say, you know, um, yeah, I'm sure the pork was wonderful tonight. And by the way, Mom, I've got your daughter pregnant. You know, something I, as awkward as that sounds, I, I really think this is time to sort of 
very gently bring in the parents because it's it's getting serious. It's not something you can even you know. <sighs> I, you, this, oh. is, this is this is a this is something that has to be discussed, however no. painful. Really? Well, you can't hide this. <laughs> what happens when the baby's born, for goodness sake? It's, it's got to come out sometime. I don't know. No, I, this is something that the family has to consult on, and, and, and mature decisions have to be made by ex people with experience. I just could not imagine sitting down with... Uh, but my stepmom didn't like me anyway. I couldn't imagine telling her uh, I got her daughter <laughs> pregnant. Caleb, uh, Caleb? Yeah. You're 19. What's up? Um, yeah, I went to uh, go get a flu shot during the flu season, and instead of a flu shot, they gave me uh, tuberculosis vaccine. vaccine. Not the vaccine, the test. They they gave me that instead the of the PPD. Vaccine. Yeah. Uh, is that bad? Well, the the thing about the PPD is it's usually no, 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 no not PPD tuberculosis. Yeah, PPD is the oh, tuberculosis skin sorry. test. So you're talking about the skin test for tuberculosis. They yeah. gave not BCG, the sort of internationally used vaccine that doesn't work worth a damn. No, yeah, no. They, they yeah shot me full of tuberculosis test. PPD. And yeah. w w this was, when were you doing this? Um, this was during the flu season just this year. So yeah, you're I'm supposed to get your flu shot in the fall, not during flu season. Well, it was for next well, year. That's what I meant. You got it in the fall? Yeah. So this happened months ago and you've been fine, right? Yeah, I've been fine, but I wanted to know if there was anything. No, it's just, it's just, the problem is that if you had had TB, primary TB particularly, uh, and you started to react to all that, boy, you could get quite a reaction. But okay. no, it should be fine. And you're fine now, so what, what, what are you concerned about? I don't know. I was just saying possibly in the future if there was something No, weird. nothing I'm aware of, no. Well, yeah, the other problem is usually it's a tenth of a cc, and this is a half a cc. Excuse me, a tenth, they give you a half a cc for the flu vaccine, so it's five times the dose that you normally get for a skin test. Mm -hmm. So they gave him five times the of the TB skin inoculation test. The other, thing, the other thing is this TB skin test is intradermal, and this, the other one's intramuscular, and so it's a weird difference. But All right. Hey, Caleb, really fine. Mm -hmm. no, you're fine. Okay. Whatever. All right. Yeah, All thanks, right. Adam. Hey, how, how, how often do you get, like, strictly medical questions like that on Love Line? Mm, one, one every... Yeah, I get one every week. night. One yeah. night. And then, what, yeah. Adam always goes silent during those? Like, just Usually. Now? Not really. He, no. he, at the end, I, I'll try to try to talk about the complexities, and he'll announce the truth towards the end somewhere. <laughs> like he did just then. Hey, I'm, Caleb, you're fine. Relax. I'm interested. He, he looked, Adam looked really lonely during that question. <laughs> I'm interested. Like, contribute. I'm interested in how stuff works, usually, yeah. in that in, in, intro and outro stuff. What's the... There's, there's some terminology that always confuses me all of it yeah all of you, it you were a that's lot more right. animated during the stepsister question yeah well it's right up my alley speaking up the alley here's uh, laura who's 15 have a question for the rabbi yeah this is kind of fresh being on love line okay well um rabbi i want to know if it's okay to smoke weed if you're jewish is that you are you jewish <laughs> yes i am i'm a conservative jew but i think when i'm older i'm going to be orthodox and so I'm and kind she, of like... She doesn't plan to give up the weed. And should it be on a bong? Or is there some ritual well, like that goes anything. with it? I, ha I don't smoke now. And I haven't. But I'm thinking about it. <laughs> and I'd kind of like to. But I don't want to regret it later. First of all, you have to make sure the weed is kosher. Right. Oh, okay, that's, that's okay. A, no, that's a joke. Uh, no, if I, if I were you, I would I would really stick to the matzo balls and the chopped liver. Uh, you know, I was I was the rabbi to the students at Oxford University in England for eleven years, and everyone tells me you know weed is not serious. I saw so many students, in in my opinion, become mentally slower, and I they they smoked a lot. I know students used to smoke two three hours a day, and it had, in my opinion had a really serious and permanent effect. I mean, why would you want to start anything like that? I mean. The mind is quite a precious organ, <laughs> and to and, and fill it up, I'm... yeah, to fill it up with anything, with anything like that. If you need a stimulant, read a great book. Find really exciting things that are healthy, that are life affirming, that you don't have to be afraid of becoming dependent on them well, because they don't, they don't drag you down. What if, what if she compromises and smokes a good book? <laughs> <laughs> As long as it's one of is my there, books. Is there anything in Judaism about altering, mind-altering sums or addictive? Absolutely. They're completely f prohibited and forbidden. We're very, yeah. very careful. I mean, to us, the, the first obligation of our religion, actually, is to preserve and protect our health. That's why yeah. every... Well, every, they're all uh, doctors. That's why. Well, someone's got to... <laughs> that's, that's why they're always, they come every couple weeks to my office over and over. <laughs> hey, yes, they're all hypochondriacs. <laughs> <laughs> but l listen... Well, hold on. Uh, wait. Get off the weed. Get, you, you, get back on. The, you, you, know. you guys can smoke. Uh, you can drink wine. We right? can drink wine, but only only Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. No alcohol. Uh, uh, Blueberries. Ethnic Jews never get alcoholism. Never. Is that right? Never. Yeah, and uh, there's that, not, that's some genetic thing. So I, they, I didn't they get know. Addiction. They get addiction, but they never get alcohol. The, the Jews were never big into the weed either. Oh, I've seen that. You oh, have. Oh yes. I've oh, not yes. seen that. That's oh. the. In fact, that's the only 
non-alcoholic marijuana addiction I've seen. Is Jew? Yep. Really? Yep. I have not. Uh, all, none of my Jewish friends. It's, uh, it's rare. I'll give you that. But smoke any it. weed? What are they into? The pills Speeds. normally? Opiates. Usually. Speed really? Well, opiates usually. Opiates. Interesting. I didn't know this all broke down so ethnically. Oh yeah, it's yeah. weird the way it does. Yeah. But I used to. I, I used to get very upset when the students in Oxford would. Uh, you know, they'd always try to hide it when I walked into the room. You can't exactly hide a stench. <laughs> uh, right. That was tea leaves. I was yeah. burning tea leaves. Yeah. It was yeah. a, a Native a, American ritual. And a bong shaped like the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> you, and you you had a lot of Jewish students. That smoked a lot of weed? There were Jewish and non-Jewish students, but yes, Jewish students as well, of course. And, and they always say to me, ah, oh, it's no big deal, you know, it's just grass. And hey, it is no big deal if they're doing it once a month. It's no big deal. Really, it isn't. But yeah, if, but I think I think these these are the kind of things that become more than once a month. Look, so many people today live with a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure, and they don't know how to find a healthy way to release that pressure. And they find unhealthy ways, and that's why I think people like marijuana, and it's a great shame because I, I think you can achieve, as I said, the same kind of stimulant, but the great conversation with a friend or something like that. We all need a release. Let's find a healthy way to do it. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm really down with the Jews and their <laughs> beliefs. First off, you know how much I hate to shave, right, Drew? Oh, there you go. And yeah. there, I'll tell you, there's two things in life I hate shaving and working on a Saturday. <laughs> and these are both things that the Jews... I went down and visited some Hasidic Jews on Fairfax a year and a half ago to do some man show bit. It was I, I, yeah. like Tuesday, middle of the day, and these guys are all just plotting around eating. <laughs> and, and I'm like, hey, what That's are you guys like... doing? They're like, we can't work. I was like, why not? We got to study. <laughs> like, really? It's Tuesday. It's the middle of the goddamn week. You can't go to work? Nope. It's forbidden. And I thought, wow, this is for me. <laughs> this is great. Well, this is what she should be doing. Instead yeah. of smoking weed, you should be eating. I should be eating and... Get just, off on food. This guy had a weird... Uh, I was wrapping my hand with something, uh -huh. and he had a weird box I strapped to my head or my arm. I mean, it was a tremendous waste of time, but <laughs> it was great. It was like a club for guys where you didn't have to work, and no one really hassled them. <laughs> You know, no one, like, came in and, hey, dead beats, get off your ass, let's get to work, let's go now. No, because when it's a religion, people sort of leave you alone. Very Wait wise. a second, and you call this love line work? <laughs> no. You're having this, the time of your life, you this, call this work? That's true, <laughs> this is not work. But so, do you, now, if I was to be Orthodox Jew, and I wanted to be clean shaven, right. would I have to use a depilatory and a, a stick or something? Would, would I, I couldn't put metal you to can, my you face, could only right? use masking tape, attach it to your beard, and we rip. You can't, pull. right, you can't shave. No, no, you, no, no, no. You, you can use an electric shaver and not, not a blade. No blade. No blade. Why an electric shaver? Because, is uh, that in the Torah, by the it way? It is in the Torah. The Book of Deuteronomy it says you shouldn't use a knife on your face. Only in Aralco. Right, right. But, but an electric knife, no problem. Well, because so, some of the rabbis say that an electric knife doesn't actually up, it doesn't uproot or damage <laughs> or things like that. At what point do you guys just start laughing hysterically <laughs> at yourselves? Only when you're in the room. All right, all right. So you got that, Drew? Got electric razor, no hey, problem. We, 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 Double edge, nope. <laughs> no knife on the face, no weed in the room. All right, and we'll be back. Love line. We'll be right back. Yes, it is the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Rabbi Shmuley Boat is here. He is the uh, author of uh, Why Can't I Fall in Love? Very knowledgeable about uh, relationships. Also uh, has a few celebrity friends. And uh, what's the name of the uh, group that uh, you and Michael Jackson run there? Heal the Kids. And what is what do you do primarily with that? We're trying to get parents to reprioritize their children, which means simply uh, all the things that we were lucky to grow up with that American kids don't. Dinner with your parents, read a bedtime story, uh, Sundays off without parents uh, answering cell phones, doing email, just to feel that you're the center of your parents' lives, that you have unconditional love and you don't have to do anything to earn it. And this is a worldwide thing. Yeah, well, we hope so. We launched in, uh, in New York and in England. Did the audience at, uh, in New York appreciate having Greenspan there? I mean, they they understand that is a major, major guy. Yeah, and I mean, I think he's considered like the foremost child yes, expert in, in the country. I would say and so. And he's also a very humble guy. Oh, yeah. He's been very kind to us in helping us steer and guide this whole initiative. Mm -hmm. And I took him to meet Michael and uh, talk about things. And um, I mean, his whole his whole approach is the need for nurturing care. More time, yeah. Yeah. Do, do you he agree? says three hours a day. The parents have to be with their kids well, three hours a day. Each parent. So yeah. it was the one-third solution, right? Wasn't that what he said? Yeah. 
Is, is, don't you agree that this country's got the worst problem in this of, of the industrialized? Of the, no of the, question about it. Yeah. I mean, kids today are being raised by Nintendo yeah. and by MTV. Yeah. yeah. Well, and with you guys at MTV, it wasn't so bad because you know all <laughs> right because it was so funny. You were wise; it was great. But ever since you guys went, the, so has the country. So have the kids. Travis, there was a chance. Yes, you're uh, 19. What's up? Well, I, about three years ago, I dated a girl, and for about six months, and uh, we ended up getting engaged. Um, probably with, within about three months of the relationship, and. Uh, six months into it, I realized that I was way too young and decided to back out and and uh, wanted to wait till later. And so you have some judgment. Good. What's you, it? You what? got you got engaged at sixteen? No, at fifteen. No. Fifteen. Yeah. All right. All so right. what's going on? What now? took what took you so long? Yeah. <laughs> what's and up now? Then, Commitment, uh, folk. Ever since then, I've just been thinking about her a lot, and uh, we've had few chats um, within the past six months or so to wanting to get back together. So I was wondering if it would be okay to go back together. With Why not? What, 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 what would be the downside? Well, um, there wouldn't really be a downside, really. Um, okay. Well, um, all right. Thanks. <laughs> I don't understand why he's calling us. Yeah. He has his ex-girlfriend. It says here she lives 350 miles oh, away. So. Right. Well, Travis? Yeah. She lives far away? Yeah, she lives uh, 350 miles away in Spokane, Washington. Yeah. All right. Well, after I just witnessed this resurrection of Travis on the phone line, why do you want to get married at 15? Don't you? Isn't there? Don't you want to be a kid? Before you have responsibilities he's and 19. mortgages. No, he's 19. I'm oh, 19 now. Okay, 19, I'm, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He, yes. he was 15. He got. He got. But even 19's young, Travis. But he. But now he's just lonely and horny. I think is what it boils down <laughs> right. to. Right. He, he knew that was a good thing for him, and they're Tra talking again. Travis, you thought there was a possibility that you could score out on your own, and you realize that that ain't happening now, right? No, actually, I got became very sexually active after I. Really. All right. Well, maybe if, maybe it's love. Hey, if you can work it out, great. Uh, 350 miles at 19 is substantial. <laughs> where, where, you were you in Seattle? She's in Spokane or something? Um, close to Seattle. Um, I'm in the state capital here. All right. You're, you're in Tacoma or what, what's Seattle? Where? <laughs> it's Olympia. Olympia. And where and where is she? She's in in Spokane, Washington. Spokane. That I've done that drive. It's not easy. Uh, it's about anywhere from six to nine hours. Nice. Good times. <laughs> well, better to fall in love with the right person in the wrong place than the wrong person <laughs> in the right place. Right. Well, All right. right. You have our blessing and uh, the rabbi's blessing as well. All right, Travis. Okay. All, All right. right, Adam. How often do you resurrect a caller like that? Get him back. Yeah. Feel sorry for him. <laughs> you him Not up. that often, right? You, you've brought. So, yeah, you know, I, 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 you do have a compassionate side. You, you brought that oh, yeah. out of him tonight. You really have. He feels somehow. He feels uh, right? on his conscience. He feels yeah, guilty. The, yeah, he you, guilt. you spoke about you know the beards. You forgot about the guilt. That's the main thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, my my Jewish uh, step grandfather. God bless him. You know, he was the only one in the family did any cooking, any cleaning, anything any at all. Child care, anything, <laughs> anything. It made lunches, made dinners. The guy was great, but. He did get you with the guilt a little. And, <laughs> and here's the way he would get you. It would be great. Like, it was subtle. Here's good Jewish guilt. Like, I'd go visit him, and then I'd go, well, Grandpa, i got to be getting back to work, so i got to leave now. You're going to leave? <laughs> yes. They make say it eight times. Yeah, i got to leave. i got to get back to work. So you're going? <laughs> yes, I'm leaving. You're leaving now? You leave me that, alone that, here in this house? <laughs> alone? That, that, that's right. Like, yeah. they really make you go back and revisit it a couple times. It's not... Gra you, Grandpa, you talk you're, to Goyim, you can say once, I'm leaving, and you get to leave. Grandpa, you're making me feel guilty. How can I make you feel guilty? I don't see you enough to make <laughs> you feel guilty. <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> Alex? Yeah? You're uh, 14. What's up? Um, well, uh, I have my dad, and... Uh, well, he's been a non-alcoholic for seven years, and he's going to AA meetings. He has a sponsor, and uh, he starts saying things to me and my brother, who's uh, 16, saying and say stuff like, uh, you guys make me want to go back and drinking. And he sounds really serious. So. You know what, Alex? He, he probably is serious. Uh, that is, you know, the stress does... Uh put alcoholics at risk but he's got a solid program going on it is completely unfair of him and untrue for him to make you responsible for his disorder he, well he also just tried to tried to stop smoking uh, he's on his he's doing it right now yeah so smoking what smoking uh just cigarettes 
You, you go to Alateen, Alex. That's what you need to do. Because okay. his, his disease is a little bit active right now. You might want to talk to his sponsor if you have a relationship with him at all. Because it's, it's not okay for him to do this to you. It's true. It's true that stress does uh, put alcoholics at risk for, for relapse. But as long as he's working his program, he'll be okay. But you got to work some, too. Uh, do, you know, do you know what I can do to say to him? Nothing. Go to Alateen. Okay. You got to take care of yourself, okay? Tell him he's going to turn you gay if he keeps dumping on you. <laughs> that should shut Tell him up. Tell Adam said that. Make hey, him feel guilty. Yeah. Adam? Adam, good times. Hey, good times there, buddy. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God. Well, oh look at God. it this way. The guy, and, and Drew, haven't, we've never spoken about this, I don't believe, but guy has, a, you know, he's drinking and he's smoking. So mm-hmm. he gives up booze five years mm-hmm. ago, and he's doing all right with that. Yeah. He's doing pretty good. He's staying with the program. Now he decides to give up another vice. Yeah. And when he gives up that other vice or attempts to give up that other, other vice, he now g- gets sort of thrust back into the booze a little bit too, right? I mean, not that he's drinking, but that he's feeling vulnerable. Now vulnerable. he's having to give something up, and some of the other stuff he gave up may be cropping up too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little more complicated than that, but yeah, I'll give you. I don't want to get into it with you, so I'll, I'll let you have. Thank it. you. You know, I'm a genius. Rabbi Shmuley is our guest tonight. We will uh, oh. take ourselves a little break. The board, oh, the board went out, then we came back on again. There All we right. go, and we'll find out more after this. Yeah, oh, it's Love Line. I like, I like these new bumpers, like all of them. Yeah, sounds that, that good. That does not sound like a, so- a song from the synagogue. What, what is that? <laughs> what is that? That yeah, is think... Weezer. Oh, it's Weezer. It is uh, Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over no, no, there. Your friends at the Yeshiva will know Weezer. <laughs> Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Rabbi Shmuley Botach is here tonight. Why Can't I Fall in Love is the name of uh, his book, The Rabbi. Like uh, most Jewish folk, have something to say. And uh, I'll tell you, during the commercials here, we just uh, take turns uh, yelling at each other, me yeah. through, and the rabbi. And I was just thinking, it's not enough time, this four or five minutes. No, we have I got I got to pee, too, and I haven't done that in an hour. <laughs> that is a huge compliment. Yeah, massive. You, you understand? My, my, my prostate is uh, it's gonna going to explode. Nuts, yeah. All right. I'm honored. Very I, want, I want a plaque saying that if I can get one. Normally, Adam, I, what, tw- every 20 minutes we're in there? Yeah. Sherry? Pink. Yes. Yes. You're 28? I am. What's up? Um, I have a three and a half year old son, and he's the result of a rape. Mm hmm. I was wondering, what am I going to tell him when he asks where his daddy is? Well, you don't tell him he's a product of rape. Is, it, is that something that was in your plans? Um, I, I didn't really have a plan. Okay. What do you think, Rob? This is a very, this is a very philosophical question. No way. You mm-hmm. don't tell him. No, no. because I, I could see from a health standpoint, I could see advantages and disadvantages to both. Just saying nothing. I think saying nothing is probably the best thing, but I don't think you get away with well, it. Well, he I died. think you can get away with it until at least the child is, is old enough and sure enough and having feel, felt, uh, felt loved enough to absorb it. But certainly to tell him at any age. I think let him discover it on his own and not tell him. I mean, uh, what, what can you possibly gain in telling him? Oh, yeah. Well, look, here's what you tell him, Sherry. He died jumping on a grenade in <laughs> Desert Storm. <laughs> He was in a foxhole with four or five of his comrades. A grenade rolled in, and he dove on it and took one for the team. Uh, you cannot tell him he's a product of rape. That's, uh, that's just going to ruin the kid. Is there, is there any, any male figure in his life now? Yeah, my fiancé. <coughs> All right. All right. But you just, just say it didn't work out. Yeah. All right. I, I, they, I, they I, get, I, get, I get the sad feeling you're going to tell him. Yeah, it's not his fault. This is not the child's fault. Yes, I understand. That you were raped. Right. So and we're is, sorry you were raped, but do not burden him with yeah, this. Yeah, nor is the child incarnation of the rape. There's a separate human, totally separate from that event. Right, and no, no, nor is he a compensation for the rape. You do have, Drew is absolutely right. You have to treat them as totally disassociated phenomena. Right. So I just tell him. Nothing. I just lie to him. And no, say, you see, that's what I don't like. You, I don't, don't, you don't have to lie. You just say your father. And, it didn't work out. Yeah, and it didn't. <laughs> Okay. All right. But don't get into it till he's at least 11, 12, at the earliest. I- into the lying. In- yeah, into, into anything. The- well, you're not lying. You're just not telling the whole truth. Right. Lying. You, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't, uh, right. Things didn't work out. He raped me. And uh, <laughs> now he's in prison. <laughs> no, don't. Hey, Sherry, please do not burden him with this, all right? Okay. All right, and I, I know. And I don't know, burden yourself either. Well, here's here's what what I have to say about the share. You may have some unresolved energy and and uh, issues with this. That's up. That's for you to resolve, right? right? 
It has nothing to do with your child. Did, did right? you know the rapist before? Um, well, I wasn't like friends with him or nothing. I just saw him um, a couple of times. I worked for an apartment complex that he lived in. Mm -hmm. And so I saw him when he came in and paid rent. All right. All right. All right. Okay, you got you got to move on, and uh, and my did, esteemed colleagues are absolutely right. Did, did Don't you get into this. Did you bring any charges against this guy? Uh, yeah, I did, and he got off on a technicality. Oh, how, how does that happen? Well, he didn't understand his Miranda rights. He said, "Oh my God, oh really? Yeah, that, that was it. Oh, so what did he do? Did he confess when they arrested him?" Um, I have no idea what happened when he was arrested. I just know that they said that... Isn't it sad that we have to Charlie apologize to the victims for the world they live in? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for Sherry. All right, so this guy did it, but he didn't understand his Miranda rights, yeah. and he didn't do any time. That's right. But okay. He's paying me his paycheck, you know. So. Oh, he is, for the so child. Yes, the state went after him for child support. Oh, okay. good. All right. Well, that's better. Better that he should do that than yeah. sit in prison and not not pay you. Yeah. All right? Uh-huh. All right. Not a Jew, though, right? <laughs> Actually, my grandmother on my father's side is Jewish, and my grandmother on my mother's side is Jewish. Right, but not the rapist. No. Yeah. <laughs> Jews say uh, fat to rape. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big PSA, you know. Yeah. Just say fat. That's right. <laughs> All right. If he was Jewish, what, what, no. he needs to rape. No. Have some chicken soup. What? That's right. We eat first, we rape later. <laughs> then we rape. <laughs> Lisa? Yes? You're 25? Yeah. What's up? Um, I want to know what the deal is with um, polyurethane condoms versus latex. If they're just the safe. Polyurethane versus latex. The, 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 I'm going to put her on hold because something's some uh, feedback there. killing me. Yeah. Uh, school is still out a little bit on uh, exactly how safe polyurethane is. They are probably quite safe, probably nearly as, fa as safe as latex. A lot of concern these days about latex allergies. I just read another big article about that. Uh, very, people are concerned about that. Polyurethane is a good option if you can't tolerate latex. And just as effective? Virtually. A little more expensive? Yes. Okay, let's talk to Adam. Adam. Yo. You're 19, what's up? I have a question for uh, Rabbi Shmuley. Yes. Well, my my mother is Jewish and my, my father is Gentile. And a long time ago, they, they, they gave me a choice of which religious upbringing I wanted. Oh. And you, and, want, uh, you want Muslim? Uh, <laughs> no. I, I, I chose neither. I chose, you know, basically, you know... The, the the non religious thing and lately I've been finding that I would like to, to be to, to become more Jewish. I was wondering if you had any recommendations or resources for for stuff like that. Well the first thing is you have to add a ch sound to your last name so that uh, as Adam does here right. with me. But, uh, uh, you do realize that from a Jewish perspective you're completely Jewish. Yeah, your mom's because it's, Jewish. Uh, right, it goes to the mother. Um, I I think it's a very good thing for you to Excuse me, like I do. Whoa. Sorry, that was my mom. Oh, yeah. She is Jewish. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Screaming Hi, mom. at a 19-year-old son. Yeah. Hey, Adam? Yeah. You calling from Burbank? Yeah. Now you got to move out of Burbank, too. <laughs> no good Jew would live in Burbank. <laughs> We've actually got a very good synagogue here. All right. So you're asking how you go about finding out more? Yes. Get, get the ra sit down with the rabbi at that synagogue. Yeah, I think you should go to the synagogue. I think there's some great books out. Uh, you know, here in L.A., Dennis Prager is very popular on the radio. He wrote a great book called The Nine Questions People Ask Most About Judaism. Um, I wrote a book called An Intelligent Person's Guide to Judaism. It sold really well. My mother bought a copy. And then two <laughs> more for her friends. Um, and there's so much, there, uh, the web is a, is a great tool. But there's nothing better than just actually being part of a community. And there's so many educational outreach organizations. So explore any or all of them. There's Chabad. There's Asha Torah, etc. Okay. All right, Adam. What, what is Chabad exactly? Good luck with the Judaism. Chabad I, is where I was educated. It's an international Jewish educational organization but, but, that sends emissaries to the most distant shores to try to open but communities. But they have all kinds of interesting community services. I, I've sent them Right, to like in Oxford. I, uh, but they have recovery programs that are they excellent. Do. They, have, they, have a, excellent. they have a... They do. They have, an, they have an outstanding national yeah. uh, addiction recovery program here yeah. in Los Angeles. Excellent. Has, what is the... Uh, I may have brought this up last time you were here, but the... Uh, the uh, Southern California Jewish Center 
as a Jewish center. Your gift of hope is a great deduction. <laughs> First off, I never stop laughing. I laugh my ass off every time I hear that. Uh, is, that is that really their jingle? Yes, that is their <laughs> jingle. And I thought, who else but the Jews would work <laughs> the deduction right into the jingle? We're, we're, we're practical people. <laughs> and the other thing that's great about it, Southern <laughs> California Jewish Center. Yeah, it must be. Now, okay, a couple of questions. A couple of comments and some questions. You know, I One think is, that these Jewish people exist only to entertain you, by the way. I, they're I really God, funny. <laughs> God called us forth from nothingness into existence just so that you could uh, have your... Uh, <laughs> there are, I've, never heard Adam, yeah, I've never heard Adam say anything is really funny. <laughs> that is, that <laughs> they're is, really funny. That is hysterical. You? Your gift of hope is a great deduction. <laughs> Southern California Jewish Center. And while all the other nonprofit organizations are trying to get a dented can of garbanzo beans these people are asking for land if you want to donate land rvs boats commercial properties holy <laughs> aircraft yeah aircraft. <laughs> jesus christ land yachts <laughs> boy and, and and what do they do does most of the jewish relief stuff go abroad are there Jews in this country that Who are... benefit? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there I think are? It's, it's something... They, they usually... It's probably like a 70, 30, 70 domestic, 30 Israel. Or it could be uh, Jews in the Soviet Union or other poor countries. I, I, Latvia, I, I, always, I always assume that because I think Jews are doing pretty well. There are poor country. Jews, by the way. Not in this I've country. met them. Yes, in there are country? plenty of poor Jews. You, they just don't revolve in your circles, Adam. Right. Let, there are plenty of poor Jews. Let me, let me define the poor Jew. Didn't get the gold package on the Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there are. I have never met. I've never met one in the uh, southern. There, California there are Jews area. who take who take in less than three hundred bucks for their bar mitzvahs. Wow. So, uh, and where do you stand on the bat mitzvah? I think this is a. Shame. Oh my! My daughter just had a bat mitzvah. She's 12. oh really? Yeah. It she would have been very upset if she didn't have a bat mitzvah. Wasn't this this trumped up this uh, female bar mitzvah in the sixties or something? It didn't. Well, exist let me ask you a question. A thousand years. Your problems with the bat mitzvah? What about the bar mitzvah? It used to be this religious ceremony. The kid reads from the Torah. Today, I, I used to go to Star Wars bar mitzvahs when I was a kid. Oh I mean, C three PO coming with a talis saying, you know, Mazel <laughs> Tov. Oh I mean, uh, I've seen some wild bar mitzvahs. This yeah. is this wasn't the plan. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, if I was uh, in charge of the Jews, which I may be. So, Adam, King of the Jews. King of the Jews, I would immediately do some work on the bar mitzvah thing. As far as this bar mitzvah has turned into tail hook, essentially. <laughs> yeah. It used to be it's a very blow, blow religious... Blowjobs blow at bar mitzvahs. So yes, it used yeah. to be a very religious uh, religious based ceremony and now it's just turned into bucks and themes and you know, you got the Mets or you got Star Wars or whatever, whatever your team is, whatever your theme is. Now the women are doing it. I would raise the age to 19 because if you've seen a 13 uh, year old Jewish boy there's you know with the braces and the nappy hair and the skinny arms uh, no way <laughs> is he a man he's got to get a ride home from his parents he can't drink for another eight years and I would eliminate the bat mitzvah because there's no such thing as a young Jewish woman becoming a young Jewish man. <laughs> it, it, the math doesn't work on it. I think you, you and Drew, you should start doing bar mitzvahs. Why haven't you guys? Why don't you do bar mitzvahs? The love line bar mitzvah. There's probably money to be made, right? How we'll give you a great jingle. What what kind of haul? Move the deduction straight into the bar mitzvah. <laughs> your gift of what? Uh, what kind of haul did your daughter make on that bat mitzvah? We did it in our house. No, I wanted it to be more wholesome. So really? we, we got a great band. She didn't and make a we killing. Danced and, no, she didn't actually because uh, because well, people just did not bring. They the didn't bring the box, money. No. Oh boy. Well, you know. Where's your, your friend Michael are. when you need him? <laughs> he couldn't make it. Robbie. Yeah. You're 16. Wow! I can't believe I got through to you guys. What's up? You guys are awesome. Uh, first of all, I like Wait, you guys. That includes the rabbi, doesn't it? Sure. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I've heard Great. I've heard a rabbi on before, but I'm not sure if that was the same one or not. Same rabbi. Same one. We only have one yeah. rabbi. Yeah, you're awesome. You're very smart. This is a rabbi-free zone, except for <laughs> <laughs> um, Adam Ace Cola uh, mayonnaise. Uh, you hung up on me the other day. Oh, I did. Yeah, you. Ca I called in and uh, you wanted. Oh. Uh -huh. I'm just showing that I could do it again. That's my main main mayonnaise. Thank you, call, you. you called in, and what happened? Um, you guys were kind of sick of talking to guys, so uh, and I was the first guy that you guys. Right. Okay. So what's going on tonight? Before Adam kicked you out again. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, Doctor Drew. I never yeah. got my DrDrew.com condoms. They never came. Um, I don't. I would go ahead and re 
I, you know, I don't know what's going on with the condom thing. I know, oh, doctor. Whatever. Yeah, so go down to Planned Parenthood well, and no, grab but, some out of the but, fish but, bowl no, no, in the he front. Should, uh, there, there were, it all bogged down at the end of the whole dot-com situation, but we got bought by Dr. Coop, so it's now a drcoop.com company. Oh, is it? And they are going to resurrect a lot of those services, and they, probably in the next couple of weeks, in fact. So uh, check it out again, Robbie. All right. So what's uh, the question? Okay, I'm sure you're all familiar with the uh, flavored... Beverage, flavored alcoholic beverages. Yeah. Right you mean like lemonade, vodka, like, lemon vodka kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. And um, I was, since all those uh, flavors have like a lot of sugar in them, I was wondering if that was like a variation of the yummy phase that Adam has been talking about. Not, uh, e- yes. No, no, even Kevin and me, they're not, they're not drinking yummy vodka. You know no, but saying? all, listen, all those sweet booze drinks, the flavored wines, the wild berry wines, the wine coolers, yeah. all the daiquiri type drinks, yeah, yeah. they're all, were invented to get chicks drunk. But, but now they have like blackberry, but they have real hard liquors that have a, a slight flavor, you know, blackberry vodka. No, but he's lemon. not, he's not talking about that. He's talking about like Mike's sweet. Hard Lemonade okay. right. and that Zima yeah, and yeah. all that stuff that's basically Yummy. has the alcohol content of beer, but it has, you know, 12 mm. teaspoons of sugar in it and yeah, a bunch yeah. of lemon flavoring. And it's so kids can get drunk. Kids yeah. and girls can get drunk. Got it. All I right. think, I think Robbie should get into kosher sacramental wine. Actually, uh, comes with a screw top, and uh, oh yeah, that's right. It doubles as, as an adhesive, and it, it is uh, really uh, Manischewitz is really <laughs> sweet stuff, right? I mean, that's almost like the kind of wa- Boone's we use it, wine. We use, it to, we use it to tile our bathrooms at home. That Manischewitz, yeah, I mean, it's really sappy, <laughs> syrupy, <gonna> get sued. <laughs> syrupy stuff. Yeah, right? you put it on your pancakes. It's good stuff. Who, no one knows who invented this kosher kiddush wine stuff, but it is. Seriously harmful. Can you? Is there a good bottle of kosher wine? No, no, there are. Even Manischewitz is good wine. No, <laughs> it's not. It's a mess. <laughs> no, there are a lot of good, good. There are kosher wines that actually come with a cork. Believe it or not. But Drew, have you ever drink that Manischewitz? I'm sure I have. It is it was not a memorable experience. Syrup, bad, sweet, syrupy. Yeah. Wine. Your grandfather must have given you some of that when you were a really bad boy, Adam. Yeah, I, I, I think you're punished. blocking it from from your from your, your memory. No, I, I I've you it, see it as a form of abuse. You hid the matzah, didn't you? <laughs> no, we never. I never did uh, do that uh, matzah hiding nonsense. But I think we did uh, leave a plate open for Elijah <laughs> once or something. Oh, who knows, <laughs> Mike? Yes, sir. You're 24. Yeah. Uh, well, I have a. It's kind of a question. Not too many people. A drug. A question about a drug. Not too many people seem to know a lot about. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, for several years now, I've been uh, uh, using a drug called Oxycontin, yeah. which is a very powerful uh, narcotic slash pain reliever. Right. You're, you're, you're a drug addict. You're an opiate addict. Yeah. So what's the question? Uh, basically, I have no money for a methadone treatment or any type of uh, withdrawal treatment or anything. So what do I do? Uh, check with county facilities. Usually, there are county-funded beds at most and many programs. Somewhere there is there are beds available. You may have to wait quite some time for it, where they can put you in and detox you. And realize that detox is the easiest thing you're going to go through. As miserable as it is, it's nothing compared to the work you have to do to get over the addictive disease and stay sober. Oh, and what can he do in the meantime? I and mean, what if he's I, six months off of a bed? How much oxycontin are you taking? Well, it, it started out as... How much are you taking now? 80 to 100 milligrams. What are you taking, four, 45 twice a day, something like that? Uh, yeah. A little that, more. That's what you, I mean, I, I space it out through the course of about 24 hours. What's the, How many milligram per tablet you have? They go from 20, 40, and 80 milligram tablets. So you have 24s and 80s. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, try to cut it down by 10%, roughly, say every three to five days. Okay, take a slow taper, see if you can do that. If you can't do that, realize you're, it, there's, you know, there's no chance of doing other thing, anything other than a cold turkey. And, and just get, well, get a bed I, somewhere. What I've, what I've tried in the past, uh, I've tried other types of painkillers like... Uh, no, Lord. it's all the same. All the right, same. Right, but uh, I've tried, say, Lortabs or Percocet. All the same. For you. But, but to wean it <clears> off. <throat> Mike, you just, no, it's all the same. All right, so let me, let me do this math. You're taking a pill how how many times a day? Uh, let's let's four. just say for example I'm taking a, a twenty four to five times uh, four a day. Time, four times a day I, they usually take it. Four uh, times a day you're taking a twenty milligram I'm, pill. I'm yeah. crushing it up and uh, sniffing it. Okay, now you're suggesting that he crushed that up and not crushed a whole pill up. 
No, is that what I'm, you're I'm saying? I'm suggesting you try to cut it down. He's got 20, 40, and 80 milligram pills. He, you know, he's probably doing 40s four times a day in reality. Right. Try, try to get it down. You know, so my, to, my biggest problem if I if I go for say more than twelve hours, we're talking like yeah, you have withdrawal, bad e withdrawal. Yeah, extreme, yeah, yeah you listen, let's not mess around here. You need to try to cut it down as best you can and get into a hospital and get detoxed. Yeah, you're 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 are totally wasting your time. Anything else? This is you might as well. It's the same thing as heroin. You might as well be slamming large doses of heroin because it's the same biology. What is oxycontin? What what is it? Is it a painkiller? Yeah, for, it's it's uh, Percocet. In long-acting, per said high dose. What would you prescribe it for? Cancer. Oh, really? really? Cancer yeah. pain. True. Um, just because I have to talk about this stuff all the time, and I'm not familiar with all the drugs. Why don't you bring one of everything in, <laughs> and let me just see if I can familiarize myself. I mean, that's gonna knock it. you on your ass. Could you be quiet during the part of the <laughs> most uh, of the program? I think I could. Yeah, and, I don't care. Make them mellow. Yeah. yeah. Make them nicer. Why don't you do that, Drew? Yeah. I'd like to get some. It'll be a service for humanity. Thank you, Rabbi. Travis? Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's up? Okay, uh, I started talking to this girl about a month ago, and uh, I've seen her about five times, and she's, uh, I'm talking to her about two weeks ago. I told her I kind of liked her on the phone, and I kind of had a boner when I told her that, so uh, you know how it makes you say things you don't really want to? Yeah, no, I was talking to my mom the other day. <laughs> I just had a boner. And like, uh, what'd, what'd you say to her? What are you wearing, I just, baby? I told her, I, like, listen, that dad, when he divorced you, I thought he was nuts, man. <laughs> All right, Travis, what's the deal? All right, I told her that uh, uh, I, I kind of liked her, and uh, I wanted to go out with her and pursue a relationship. And mm -hmm. was, why, why were you talking to her on, a, on the phone? Because she, she lives a little, like, maybe 15 miles away, and I wouldn't say it to her face, because, like... No, uh, why did you call her in the you, first place? Yeah. Huh? Why did you speak to her in the first place? Why did you call her? What was the pretense for the phone call? I, uh, I just wanted to talk to her, I guess. Is she a friend of yours? Well... She's one of my older sister's friends. I see. And you just found the number and called her up? Well, actually, my sister, my older sister's like, yeah, she likes you. And I'm like, oh, my God. And uh, I was like, I was kind of stoked because she's older than me. And I was like, yeah, right. the girl likes me. All right, hold on. I'll, right. I'll tell you. We have the world's dumbest callers to this show. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you call her? I wanted to talk to her. <laughs> You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's called concrete thinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They I mean, can't abstract. Yeah, they can't. I mean, yeah. they hear... You know, it's funny. One, one of my sons just like went through a rapid phase of growth last couple of weeks, and he started abstracting all of a sudden. I noticed it when I say, you come on, play baseball. But usually you stand there, let's play baseball. Let's go, let's go, let's go. This time he went, I'll be outside of me in five minutes. Oh, yeah. I was like, Ooh, whoa. Becoming <laughs> a man. It's abstracting. Yeah. Right. Travis uh, has not yet reached the uh, point that your uh, seven-year-old son has reached. <laughs> okay. All right, Travis. So you call her because you want to talk to her. Yeah, and then she started, like, saying stuff that she wouldn't usually tell other guys and kind of... Right. Yeah. And you asked her out on a date? No, I didn't ask her out. I just said I liked her. And right. I so, uh, I, and then, like, uh, that was about... That was about two weeks ago, and lately, about a week and a half, she's been calling like 15 times a day and bugging the hell out of me, yeah. and, uh, and I, I never really liked her in the first place. Yeah, how old is she? She's uh, 17. And do you, do you, does she get you on the phone when she calls? No. Like, I have my, uh, my sister and my mom. Or my... Why don't you okay. have your sister? Have your sister yeah. mop up for yeah. you. No, because... No. Oh. Oh, well, she's well, I, I'd actually, I'd actually say that since you started, you initiated this through the phone call. You shouldn't get someone else to do your dirty yeah. work. You should be very mature and say, you know, I, I, I made an, I made a mistake. I'm sorry if I misled you or led you on. Uh, you know, whatever. This isn't right. I don't feel the same way. I'm sorry if I hurt you. And just be a man and and heal the love wounds. But don't run from it and don't complain that she. You know, you started this. Now you're complaining she's calling. Take responsibility. And and this time, beat off before you call. <laughs> It removes that sense of urgency, dude. It, it, it is. Uh, it's true. You know, it's funny. You know, you, I, beat off. you know, you know. Yeah. You see, I make the statements. You give the commentary. So uh, yeah, the fill in the that, blanks. Michael Jackson. Why don't you? Well, I'll take up with you. We'll get something done. <laughs> You know what I? You know I, I don't know why it just ran through my mind, but you know it's funny. And I know you guys aren't going to cop to this, but it happens to me from time to time. Uh, once in a while, I'll uh, be whacking off just in the middle of the day, you know, four in the afternoon or something. The phone will ring, uh -huh. and I'll be interrupted, <laughs> and I'll pick the phone up, and I'll be angry at the person that calls, but I can't really 
explain to them <laughs> why I'm angry at them. I'm just irritated at them, and Adam, it's so funny. This is this. You should not have said this. You should not have told the story because. Eight out of ten times that I call you, you're angry. <laughs> oh, really? And now every time I'm be, oh, holy Christ, what have I gotten into here? <laughs> Forget about that. What about when he's on the radio and uh, he sounds so angry? It, it's, uh, re- it's really funny, though. And then I'll hang the phone up and I'll go, Jesus Christ, you got to call and ask me that at four. It's four in the afternoon. Come on now. I have some decency. All right. But, you know, but at this yes. age, you know, teenagers have got to learn how to treat a woman, even if you're 16. You're right, you're and you right. can't just start things no, and right. later, I just changed my mind. These are people. You you're can't right. break people's hearts and act with impunity and leave all these scars. Yep, you're right. They'll be a gentleman. Well, as uh, we were talking about off the air with the rabbi and sometimes on the air, it's a sort of get what you can get world yeah. at this point. Uh, other people don't really exist except for to serve you. And if you want somebody to have sex with, fine, then they exist. And if you all of a sudden don't want them for any reason, then they don't exist. But there's no sense of how is this person feeling? What did I make them feel like? What is my responsibility in this? And how can I rectify it? It's just I'll just dodge the calls and hopefully she'll go away. Maybe she'll kill herself. <laughs> okay, well, speaking of killing yourself, yeah, we got to take a break. Go. And Drew's got to Drew, you got to whiz, right? Oh. All right, we'll be wow. back. Loveline. One eight hundred love one nine one. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rob Schneider. You're listening to Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew on Loveline, my favorite show. You're doing it. Yes, you is. It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. The movie's doing okay, isn't it? Rob's? I don't know. I haven't uh, been so uh, busy lately. I haven't heard uh, anything about that. Coming up uh, on uh, Loveline in the next uh, days and weeks, uh, the Colt's going to be in here. Tricky's going to be here. Dave Navarro, Pennywise, 311. Lots of good bands. Tonight, Rabbi Shmuley Botach. Why Can't I Fall in Love is the name of his book. The rabbi is a very wise man, and I suggest that you read what he has to say. Let's get back to the phones and speak to Dave, who's 41. Dave? Hi. Good evening. Love your show. Thanks. This is for the rabbi. I have a dilemma. Um, I'm married to a wonderful person, and she's not a Jewish. I'm a Jewish and now she likes to have a kid. And uh, when we got married, we agreed that if she likes to have a kid, she must convert to be a Jewish. And now she don't like to convert to be a Jewish. And you want to know what you should do? Yes. Okay, you're already engaged? No, we already married for five years. Married for five oh, years. Oh, I see, I got it. Kid. Okay, right. Uh, well, it's a serious it's a serious issue because uh, if she is not Jewish, your, your children, at least in the Jewish community, will not be yeah, Jewish. Can't they convert at some point? They can. All right. Um, no I pressure. don't believe. I don't know. I don't believe in in ripping apart marriages uh, for reasons such as these. And what you really have to do, I think, is at least persuade her to go and talk to uh, a rabbi together, someone who might be able to explain to her what this all entails uh, and what her <laughs> requirements for her would be, so she can make an informed decision. Have you done that? Yes, I try, and, and she she went along for a long time. Then she realized that to be a Jew, she must uh, give up uh, Jesus as her savior, and then she got scared and she changed her mind. Well, what you can't do is force her to uh, convert, because first of all, the conversion isn't valid, and secondly, that's not really respectful. You marry a woman, suddenly you say, I don't like you the way you are, and for the sake of the kid, you suddenly have to change. That's not love. That's, your, that's love on your terms. What about the Jews for Jesus? Are well, they a bunch of crackpots? I debated the head of Jews for Jesus on Larry King a little while ago, and I've now challenged him to a public debate, and I hope he'll do it. Uh, we've been corresponding about the how, terms how, of the debate. Are there? Are there? Is it are the Jews, uh, for, Jews Jesus? for Jesus? Is is, is like uh, you know Muslims for Buddha or uh, Americans yeah. for Stalin? I mean, come on, these are two totally incompatible <laughs> right. systems. Just, just to get everybody up to speed, and Adam for marriage, including myself. The uh, the. <laughs> The Jews, uh, while, while they like Jesus, don't look at him as a Messiah, right? We, we look at Jesus, many look at Jesus as someone who had inspired ethical teachings, but in the end of the day, he still went against traditional Jewish teachings. He's certainly not Messiah, and he's certainly not the Son of God, because we don't believe that anybody's the Son of God, my mother's opinion of me notwithstanding. So God is the Messiah. No, not, no, not, no. Not Jesus? The Messiah in Judaism is, is, is nothing but... Uh, a great leader who will 
persuade the nations of the world to beat their swords into plowshares, bring peace. He is a mortal person. He's just a man, but he's a great man. But he's not he's arrived not divine. Yet. No, he's not arrived yet. And right. we know he hasn't arrived because the main thing is world peace. And judging from the events in the Middle East, uh, there ain't no world peace. Right. So uh, he has not arrived yet, and he didn't arrive in the form of Jesus. Now, your wife, like uh, many religions, and I don't know what, what religion is your wife right now, Dave? She's Seventh-day seven Adventist. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a pain well, in the Well, there's a, a lot in common, Seventh-day Adventists and the Jews. But, look, look, A, you can't force her to become a Jew because that's disrespectful and it's not valid. B, uh, you've got to work this out because you guys will fight over how to raise the baby, and that's going to undermine the marriage anyway, and that you don't want either. Uh, C, Adam's solution of Jews or Jesus is not a Why solution. Why not? She's Jewish, and she still gets to keep Jesus. No, this goes under because, usual. Be, because it's not... It not only is it not workable, it's not real. These are incompatible doctrines, well, which are tiny, that, little, insignificant. Tell that to the Jews for Jesus yeah, people. Give, they uh, look at themselves as, as Jews. Well, okay, the American Communist Party looked at themselves as valid uh, as well. well Capitalism I, communism are totally different systems. I think uh, marriage means compromise. You could slide her in on a technicality here. But, hey, what if hey, the compromise here was that she had a sex change operation and become a man or something? I mean, yeah. you're talking about, for, for us, at least really in our belief Really struck a system. nerve here with the Jews for <laughs> Jesus. You hear that? Wow, it's going nuts. You know how to get me. You know how to All right, but let me ask some real questions. How long does it take someone to convert? Okay, for us, a conversion is uh, acceptance of the rules of Judaism as outlined in the Torah. Mm -hmm. That means you have to be knowledgeable about the Torah, oh. and you have to commit to living the Jewish life. I mean, you want to become a doctor, you can't do it overnight. And no, right. you know, patients are going to come to you if you have no knowledge. But it, no, it's about, I mean, it would be a minimum, it's about a year, at least about a year. year. Yep. No crash course internet thing. People, like, people offer it, but it's not valid. What good is it? It's not accepted by anyone. I know some guy who offers like a 48-hour conversion. <laughs> uh, you know, right, but, go to a doctor that had a 48-hour degree. All right, but here, here's, I, I think, and, and Dave, stop me if I'm wrong. Wrong. But you need her to technically become Jewish so that your children will become Jewish, not to necessarily embrace the entire Jewish lifestyle. Am I right? Yes. All right. So you get the 48-hour conversion. You, be, She becomes technically Jewish. It's all this religion's one big technicality anyway. And then you raise your kids technically Jewish. Okay, Adam. No oh, problem. Oh, wait, oh, Adam, my son. Yes. <laughs> Let me explain. Yeah. You can't become an American citizen in any crash course. You have to have a basic knowledge of the Constitution, Declaration of Independence. You have to be committed to the principles of freedom as enshrined wow. in that Constitution. And then you've got to take an oath and you've got to have a Pledge of Allegiance. And that all makes sense because it ain't no big joke to be an American. We take it seriously. But, or, How much you, more so or you can Jews pay someone around. three grand and marry them and become an American citizen and get divorced a week later. Right. And if, That's and if, what I'm saying Dave needs to And if to immigration do. found out about that, they'd invalidate it because they say, uh-uh, that right. ain't real. All right, hey, Dave. And in the same way that I'm proud to be an American, <laughs> same thing is true about being a Jew. Dave? Yes. You got your hands full here with this one. I, I think... Uh, you, you can take the Adam 48-hour crash course, and only Adam will Well, she's not going to do She's not going to do the one-year thing. She's not going to memorize not? that Torah. It takes a year to have a kid. She doesn't want to do it. Okay, well, at least let him, let him, you know, have you taken her to a, a rabbi who can at least explain the Jewish religion to her in a way that she might find it attractive? Or have you just stuffed it down her throat and said, this kid's going to be Jewish or I'm out of here? Um, you know, we went to the synagogue a few times and she, she enjoyed it, so it's pretty nice. But have you talked to anyone that could explain it to her? No, this is the next thing. She is willing to meet a rabbi, and maybe this is going to be the next thing that we like to do. But I'm right. refusing to have a kid who's going to burn to a woman as much as I love her, who are not the Jewish. Oh, boy. All right. Well, look. And wh where are you from? Sacramento, California. <laughs> I see. I recognize the accent. <laughs> you one of those uh, Sephardic Jews? Um, yeah, I came here 10 years ago from Israel. Sacramento. Oh, Israel. Okay. Oh, I tried to work the pun in there. He didn't get it. <laughs> Oh, boy, what a pain in the ass. <laughs> Look, you married her, you love her, hash it out with her, for I Christ's agree. Hash sake. I agree, hash it out. Make and, the and, work. And, you know, his, uh, well, I was going to say his good, but as bizarre as religion is, and as good as it is sometimes, the whole idea is to get people together, not uh, together, break yeah. families well, I'm apart. Well, I'm going to have you moderate this debate between me and the head of Jews for Jesus. <laughs> so you can be I'd, in the middle on that I'd one. I'd really right? like to meet that crackpot. <laughs> Becky? Hi, how are you guys doing? Good, you're 15, what's up? Yeah, um, I've been masturbating since I was 11, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if that was normal, because I was, like, always 
taught that it was wrong because, like, I'm an Orthodox Jew. Right. So and, some, and somebody taught, actually somebody actually taught you that? Not taught me, but, like, I've always heard from my siblings, you know, I have ten older siblings. Ten? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. So... I think that's cool. Anyway. Oh, my God. It, no, I, I just... I, just, I, I pain <laughs> I pain for the parents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and... I, so I was like, oh, you know, I always heard it was wrong, and like when I do it, I feel really guilty. All right, Rabbi. Well, look, um, firstly, I have seven kids, and I think big families are nice. Secondly, even though Adam has passed out with my saying that, uh, secondly, no. he's, still, it. Okay, he's it. still conscious. Uh, secondly, look, Jews do not look at sex as something to be guilty about at all. We look as, at sex as, in, our, in, in the Bible, there's no word for sex. The word is knowledge. We look at it as the ultimate way by which a man and a woman can know each other. So the ideology is that you have to be careful with your sexuality to ensure that when you want to use it later in love with a man, that it will be a form of knowledge. Now, should you feel bad about masturbating and guilty? No. The, I the idea behind it, or not doing it, I guess, is, n is not that you're going to turn blind and all this other silly stuff, but it's rather that our sexuality is supposed to be the engine by which we gravitate to a man, the engine by which we remain close to a man. No one knows how to keep men and women together anymore today. There's a 63% divorce rate. The whole sex in the city phenomenon is about four women who enjoy each other's company far more than, than they enjoy any other man. In fact, they only date men in order to entertain each other the morning after with stories. So... Use your sexuality to, impel, to propel you to a man. The thing about masturbation is that it's self-contained. It's about self-pleasuring. And while that isn't the worst thing in the world, obviously, it's supposed to be used to push you towards someone else. And I know that everyone says, oh, come on, masturbation is something benign. But I'm really concerned about what are we going to use as the glue that keeps a man and a woman together. And I would like to see men and women pleasuring each other. Now, obviously, you're very young for that, and that's why you wait to experience sexuality in the confines of a committed relationship later when you're married. But you shouldn't feel guilty about it. You should understand it, and you should try to transcend it, and I think, and, and always understand that your sexual energy is something beautiful, and you should harness it, uh, God willing, in a few years' time, to make <laughs> it something that does keep you joyous with someone for the rest of your life. Huh? All right. All right. <laughs> Becky? Are you, yeah. are you there? Enjoy. Hey, that's Becky. That's Adam's way of saying enjoy. Yeah. No, you got... You, I, listen, I agree with the rabbi, and uh, I thought it was pretty bold of him uh, calling uh, semen glue that way, at least <laughs> half, this is, as I understood it, halfway into it. Well, it's certain you've had some experience. But, uh, hey, uh, you have you're, you're, you have ten brothers and sisters? Yeah, older than me, yeah. Yeah. Give me all their crazy Jewish names. Oh, come on. I can't do that. Come on. Name them off. Um, there's... Adam. Oh, that's God, a, that's no, crazy. I, I mean, Jewish. they're crazy. <laughs> the, the, they're Jewish names. Well, maybe it's Adam. <laughs> no, no, well, that's his English version of his name. Uh, yeah, I went the crazy Jewish version. Crazy Jewish version? Okay, there's Menash. There we go. Throwy, uh all kinds of crazy names. All right, thank you for not helping me at all again. <laughs> you know all the crazy Jewish names, your brothers and sisters, right? Uh, yeah. By the All way, right. you know, I'd appreciate, and I'm not saying this just to plug the book, or maybe I am, but you should read my kosher sex book. I discuss all this kind, this, this stuff. That's who I wrote it for people like you. I hope you will read it. All right, I will. All right, all right. It's hey, about Becky, how to make sex kosher. Give me the crazy Jewish names. Ready? Go. All right. Maishi, Manas, Sreli, Rachel, Abi, Sarah, Khani, Manya, Bracha, and Rezi. There you go. And then there's me. What's yours? Well, Rifka. Thank you. See? Wasn't so hard. You know, you should have been uh, you should have been Amish, Adam. I should have. His, yeah, his we should name, give you like a horse and buggy. His name is Hezekiah. <laughs> it is. I like working with wood. I uh, hate computers and technology. You hate razors. And, and, you, I, and you don't wear buttons. That's right. <laughs> oh, wait. Can they wear buttons? They can't wear buttons. Really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a sign of pride. Oh, Only zippers. No, no, they use pins, actually. Oh, oh there's another group of crackpots <laughs> over there. And you're the most normal person that ever lived, right? Thank you. I know you're being facetious. We'll be back. Love Line. Love Line will be right back. So get your problems ready. Yes. Oh, oh, quiet down, Drew. It's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Rabbi Shmuley Botach is our guest tonight. Why Can't I Fall in Love is the name of his book. And a uh, quick uh, Torah question. I was just uh, heard something that the uh, best-selling book uh, each and every year is the Bible. How's the Torah sell? And is the Torah you read right to left? Right? Is that that's, correct? That's correct. And is it's it's book form? It's it's not a scroll, a scroll or anything. Or is it a scroll? 
It's scroll form. It's written on parchment, vellum. Can you go down to a, a B. Dalton's and buy a Torah? <laughs> can you go on Amazon? <laughs> you can buy the Torah in book form and read you can. it for yourself. But in the synagogue, it's read from a scroll. And how many uh, how many pages is the Torah? One. It's a uh, scroll. Yeah, I know. But in book form, what's it? What's it? Manifest itself. I don't know, probably five hundred pages or so. Really? Yeah. Well, what's the what's the Bible? Well, New and Old Testament. Right. Yeah. Right. So you say that. Yeah. I, mean, I, think that you're, I think you're confusing all these different things. Yeah. The New no, Testament. I'm, I'm, the New Testament is How shorter. How dare you? Go ahead. Okay, well, our Bible is the Hebrew Bible, which consists of twenty-four books. Which is the Old Testament. Oh Christ! Yeah, that's that's too much. <laughs> but, what, <laughs> but, but, but now, what's the Torah? Can give, we can give you the abridged version. Is the Torah <laughs> all of those? Torah is all of those. Oh. But usually when people speak, speak about the Torah, they speak of the five books of Moses, the first five books, which is the main part of the Torah, which is what's read in the synagogue every week. Yeah, every they Saturday. made a movie out of the first book, right? Uh, well, Hest- a lot of the first book. And Heston uh, star in that? <laughs> yeah, he, he, he looked just like Moses. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, nobody less Jewish than Chuck Heston, is there? I mean, uh, he shouldn't have played Moses. Neo? Yeah. You're, uh, you're, you're 17. What's up? Yeah, I just want to get your opinion on something. You know, the guy who should have played Moses is the guy who played uh, the uh, Fiddler on the Roof guy all those years. Have you? Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, Topol. Yeah, right. Yeah. Topol. Yeah. Go ahead, Neil. Yeah, man, I was thinking about asking out this 12-year-old girl. You're thinking about a 12-year-old girl? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you are an asshole. You're not going to do anything, right? Yeah. You're not going to do anything? No, I want to do her. You do? Yeah. Why? Why would you call and tell us that you want to commit a crime? Because I guess he doesn't want to. You're you're trying to. You're, are you looking for ways to get off this idea? I mean, or it's, it's get illegal, rid of this It's idea. illegal to do this. I just want to ask you, what do you think about it? I think it's a horrible idea. You'll be damaging her. It's and and you'll be committing a crime. How is it a crime? If you have sex with someone underage, even if you are underage, it's a crime. And where do you know this girl from? I seen her at the mall. We become friends. How much pot do you smoke, Neo? A little bit. Yeah, a little you bit. Just, you just finished a couple bong loads just now? No, nah, no. Nah. Well, that's, that's bad bit, news. A little bit is the whole fireplace full. Yeah. Look, even, even, even if it wasn't a crime, don't you understand that she's a child? I mean, take the law away for a second. You're an intelligent guy. You were smart enough I, I to beg dial your, the I number. Beg your pardon. Yeah. <laughs> Not overdo it. Yeah. Don't you understand that she is a child? Stop looking at her as a woman. She is a kid, a child. She is 12. Do you get it? No. No. All right. Well, at least you're honest, Neil. I'll give you that. All right, Neo. Yeah. Let me uh, let me try to I- infuse a little knowledge into you before I hang up on your stoner ass. Here's the deal. Uh, forget about you for a second. Think about her. Do put your needs aside for ten minutes and focus on somebody else. You will be hurting her, and eventually. You will hurt yourself because you will go through your life with this knowledge. You'll be that guy. You will be the guy who, who rapes the twelve year old. Rape the twelve year old. All right. So yeah, just f- find yourself a Think of what if they're your sister? You're nice, about. nice sixteen or seventeen year old stoner, and you know, settle in, please. Jesus Christ. Enjoy. Kim, he's a, he's a despicable yes. asshole. Thank you. You're forty. What's up? Uh, hi, Adam. Hey. It's a pleasure talking to you. Let me first tell you that. Well, thank you. I love you. Whoa. You are hilarious. Kim, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. What are you smoking? <laughs> oh, um, I, I just smoked a joint, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and I also want yeah, to I love what Dr. humor Drew. can bring out in this show. <laughs> Dr. Drew, yeah, yeah. Um, I really, uh, as... Um, a member of the Ohio Right to Life Society, I really appreciate all your work that you do to try to stop abortion. Okay. I and I really do appreciate that. My pleasure. Just, just before you go and, on, I just wanted to ask you and, 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 uh, and Adam quickly, are there any people who are not stoned who listen to Loveline? Not that we're aware of. <laughs> no. That's okay. a requisite. <laughs> okay. uh, well, and about four years ago, a guy called in and wasn't <laughs> stoned, but uh, we quickly got rid of him. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I don't do it all the time. I understand. Don't mention that again either. I'm like Adam. you, Adam. I'm like you. I just, you know, I mean, just I to just, go to sleep at night. I have, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> right. So you're you're a pro lifer who smokes weed. Oh yeah. Interesting. But you know, she sounds like a real pro lifer. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And and you guys is 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 the group that you're with? Uh, are they for the morning after pill or against it? Oh, I am for it. See, see what I'm saying? Good. 
You're doing the the Lord's work, or I am doing the Lord. Whoever the Messiah work. is, who I hasn't do arrived feel like yet. I am because I, I I know you don't believe in God, but you know I do, and I am a Christian, even though I do smoke weed occasionally. <laughs> sure, that comes from the earth. Yeah, God put it here. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> he also put an Amanita Floydies, which if you take one little nibble of, will kill you dead. Okay, but he gave he 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 gave her the ability to abstract and rationalize. Rationalize yeah. exactly. Yeah. Right. What about the famous? The saying? Lord wouldn't enough. have given her that ability to rationalize. You, you've heard that the uh, twenty-one that, years. I've been married for twenty-one years. Congratulations, same man. That's great. I have two boys. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I know you guys fact, put wait down a, minute. a lot of people. No, no, I mean it's like uh, for getting married really young, and I, you know, I was young, but and I wasn't pregnant when I got married. How old was your husband? Uh, my husband's forty three. The only okay. thing I know about this couple is they didn't live in California. Right, they never would have lasted here. All right, really? so so Kim, yes, did you have a, a question or a criticism for the rabbi? Well. I Kind of. I'm just. Um, I, first, I want to know why the um, uh, the Jews do not believe that um, uh, Jesus is the Son of God. If he could explain that to me. Well, first of all, let me let me make it. <laughs> all right, you got about forty seconds. So yeah, go ahead. Let me, right yeah, let me make it clear that I'm not in no way trying to undermine your faith or your religion. I'm speaking from the perspective of my own. We believe that God is everywhere. God is disembodied. That God is not prejudicial by coming in the form of a man or a woman that would disenfranchise women. So there's no such thing as a son of God because God has no offspring. We don't believe God impregnated a woman. Uh, that doesn't mean that Christianity is a false religion. It just means that it's it's antithetical to Judaism. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I put her on hold because we got to take a break and. Uh uh, listen, uh, Jesus is the Son of God. Please, Jesus. I mean, do you guys really believe that nonsense? Come on, all you screwballs out there. Is that really what you need? Do you well, have I to gave, cling to that? Yeah, there's a diplomatic and non-diplomatic response here, Adam. And uh... Well, listen, uh, let's face it. Most religion is nonsense based on nothing. But people's fear... To, people don't want to die. Well, let me ask you a question. And what, and, what, and what about the lust for celebrity and to try to be really successful? And that has real meaning and purpose to it? No, not at okay. all. So, that not, so what you're saying is that not many things have no they don't no listen i was so enjoy the sun while it lasts i i was uh i was telling somebody uh i was talking to uh today uh, i did a couple of man shows today and they were like how'd it go and i was like i was fine i just want to get the hell out of there <laughs> and uh and i told him listen the, the only time i really know i'm alive is when i'm napping <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll take a break hello this is your radio radio love line will be right back well, there you go. Another uh, provocative uh, two hours in the can, as they say. <laughs> Rabbi Shmuley, I, I really, uh, the show, uh, two hours is not enough to contain your wisdom. I feel So, so come back. Thank come you back. very much. I'm not going. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. You'll be, he's sleeping right here. You stay here. I think uh, Lycus Don't goes on the air in. about Very seven. Hard. Okay, well, I'm... <laughs> I'm a night owl. Uh, should, it, 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 next time, uh, bring some sort of ceremony that we can do for Adam. Candles or some circumcision. Some, you know, circumcision. <laughs> we'll get a moil in here. You need a little work. Adam. Why you can't... Can we, thank you. Yeah. Why Can't I Fall in Love is the name of the book. It is uh, chock full of the rabbi's wisdoms. Go I'm out and uh, get it. And you guys, uh, thank you, you again. You guys do a great service, and I love being on the show. Thank God you. bless you both. You're welcome Even anytime. Even you. The God you don't believe in, Adam, may bless you. I appreciate that. <laughs> So until next time, Santa Crow for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.